Fractal Plus this. I'm Kathy Deach, and I have two amazing women, friends as twere, as it is now, plus this with Kathy Deach and friends. Uh, I'm really, really proud to, tell, uh, to call both of these ladies my friends. I have Gloria De Leon here. Hello. She made it. She zoomed over from her J-O-B. Thanks, Glass Old Park. What? <laughs> And Don Ellerby is here, back. Hi, everybody. Better than ever. <laughs> oh, thank you. And they're not only co-hosts, they are guests because I'm going to put them on the spot in our third segment. But they're up for it. They promised me they feel they feel it. I love that you guys are looking at my camera as though the people there can see you. I don't know where I'm <laughs> supposed to look. Your camera is here if you oh, want to talk to the people. Oh. And your camera's there if you want to talk to people. <laughs> you two are the most adorable things. Guys, they she, they were like really thinking it was a wide shot I and that you could see both of them. I theater school, not uh, camera school. Yeah, me none of the above. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. I play to the room. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, I love it. That's why I love it because you're so my people. Um, and also, I think this setup is this a little different than the last time the two of you were here? I've never been on this side. Oh, okay. Before. Look at that. No one puts Gloria in a corner. Yeah. <laughs> Get it, baby. And were we, we might even done, been yeah, in a different we were space. In different space. Yeah. Totally different space. When I walked this in is... here, I was like, ooh, oh, fancy. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. That's awesome. Well, way overdue to have you both back. Just to remind you, Gloria is one of my partners in crime of Fatch Comedy, my sketch group, and that's how we met. And now we're really, really good friends. She also, is her own podcaster so that is yeah. really exciting and she's going to talk a little bit about that I hope and um, Dawn is a former Olympian now fashionista and a model and we'll talk more about that too okay. well I wanted to catch up with both of you I mean we haven't been on the air for four months so I have a the list I have here of goings on just from what I could remember is absurd. So I want to ask you guys where you're at, like where how what ha, what has been happening to you since the new year and and maybe even like holiday time if we can remember. This day feels like a year, so I don't expect you really <laughs> to dig like, that deep. It's been a long day. Yeah, day. I guess we should we should acknowledge that Corona is real. Yeah, definitely it's, real. Definitely, it's definitely not a joke. It's making it hard to get toilet paper, which is something I didn't think would be a thing <laughs> in my lifetime, I guess. I didn't think about that. But it did. And my friends would make fun of me for getting the big one all the time because I'm a single lady. They'd be like, you always get the big one, not just four pack. I'm like, oh, no, 20. I get 20. Don't let it be and on now sale. <laughs> There's so much in my car, I can't um, take it in the house all at once. <laughs> We know who to go to. You go yeah. right to her. To her car. <laughs> you need some glory. I'm gonna be sitting there with newspapers. I don't even have. I wouldn't even have a newspaper. I, I probably use old sides from auditions. <laughs> Just it's like, like like rent when they're trying to start the fire, but grosser. Yeah, and unflushable. Yeah, and his papers aren't really flushable. This, I'm sorry. This took a real. I took this to a really dark place really yes. fast. Yes, we're, but we're gonna be okay. But Corona, you know, it's weird because obviously California, this is an issue, but everybody here, I think, doesn't mind staying at home. <laughs> like everyone here is kind of like I don't have to be in my car that's actually okay traffic has been mm -hmm. really incredible even though it's like a downpour outside and I think everyone's like no I'll just go home and, and do stuff from I don't I don't know too many people who are panicking panicking and mm -hmm. it, it's almost like they appreciate the the time not have to have yeah. to do anything mm -hmm. but um, I know for what you do, Don, it's it's like, you know, sports are decimated. It is devastating. Um, and we think about it from, like, the March Madness, NCAA tournament. All of our seasons have been – some of our seasons have been canceled in the um, different conferences. But when you think about the student athlete who's worked all these months to lead up to their postseason in men's and women's basketball or who's looking forward to the spring season, and you think about the seniors. It's their senior year, and they can't compete. So I'm not sure where that goes from here, but I cannot imagine, as being a former student athlete, I cannot imagine having to like sit out for things way beyond my control. Uh. The only comfort is it was 100%. 
out of their control. Yeah. That's the only comfort yeah. in the whole situation. Yeah, it's tough. And mm-hmm. I think that that's why it took even, you know, the professional leagues to finally say. Because mm-hmm. I think they feel the same exact way. It's like right. there's so many people who count on this organization to run. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's it's been a weird day. But... Yeah, I there, have um, my sorry. To no, no, no. You have uh, your job too. My my sadness is that so we have theater camps for kids, and um, we like take theater to their schools or whatnot, and they write their own plays. And so we're getting to the point where they spent all the fall writing a play, and in the spring they perform it, and now their performances are being canceled. Mm-hmm. And so that's really heartbreaking because they it's they work so hard to get it done, and now we don't even know if we're going to be able to have them even perform, we, we tried to give alternatives like performing it to uh, an empty room and just recording it for them, but that's all up in the air right now. Mm-hmm. That is, it's yeah. sad. Yeah. And Broadway shows are closed, which like literally never happens. <laughs> I mean, for a month, like they went ahead and were like a month. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, if it, it, that is like something that's kind of even unthinkable. Which, you know, goes to show how real it is. Yeah, yeah this is probably wise. I mean, I, I'm not a panicker. I don't tend to go into panic mode, but I do recognize that it is necessary before it gets cra- too crazy. So, yeah. 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 And, you know, lives are at stake. So, you know, even though there is a sadness there, I don't think anyone would... I mean, anybody who would question, like, isn't this the right thing to do for, like, society? Right. I feel like that's, like, a pretty big, you know undertaking that we all have responsibility I in, think that's so. something that 99% of us can agree on. Yeah. I get yeah. on Twitter. <laughs> 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 but right, right, I think right. most of us can agree on that. It's safety for all those involved is most yeah. important. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. true. It's true. So before all of this, if you can go back to the way back, <laughs> Gloria. Yeah, the way back to 2019. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this year's been crazy. I mean, Fatch has been uh, just blowing up, and we, you know, we did San Francisco Sketch Fest, and that was amazing. We had sold out shows. We did the sold out show at UCB. Uh, we're now preparing in to, to launch into our next phase, and so we're just trying to get more stuff written and produced. So there's that, and then I started this new job as well. So that also is working sort of in tandem with the podcast, which I've been trying to make time for everything, but... Remind people yeah. what the podcast is. So um, it is, it's a podcast, it's called Noveleando. It is in English, um, but it we sometimes throw in Spanish words. It's about Spanish language telenovelas. So it's basically just, we enjoy the dramatic. It's me and my, uh, my friend Delia Gomez, and uh, we talk about novelas, and we use that the novelas as a bouncing off point to talk about different issues in Latino culture, like colorism and body shaming issues, Um, the lack of LGBTQ representation, the lack of speaking about mental health as if it's a real thing, you know, because we don't talk about that in novelas. Mental health is always, like, very hidden or mislabeled or used as a plot point, but it's never handled in a very realistic human way. Yeah, that's what it's about. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And and that's been going. It's still going. We actually missed this uh, this last week because we do it every two weeks. It's the second and fourth Wednesday of the month. Uh, but we did, uh, Delia's also, she's doing school. So we missed our last one because we just could not find the time to get together. But then Hentified, which is a show that came out on Netflix, um, it that just came out. And I did the um, English um the audio description for Hentified in English. So I was recording that as well. So it's just been a lot of amazing things, but very busy. Yeah. So it's wa- great. watch Hentified. Yeah. It's, it's really good. I was recording the audio description and I have the scripts in front of me and I'm watching it as I'm reading it. And there were parts where I was like, and then she tells her father she loves her. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like I was trying to not be emotional because I'm so highly emotional, but it's such a good show. I was like, no, it's got to be neutral. But then she tells her mom she appreciates the work she's done for her. <laughs> I love it. I know that's definitely on the list. And if my pa- my power went out before I came here, so my power's on when I go home. <laughs> if. Um, I'm glad I didn't go food shopping until I was like, oh, no, I'll wait till Friday. It'll be fine. And I'm glad I did because Lord knows what I'm going to go back to. But, um, yeah, that's definitely on my list of things to watch. And we had a blast in San Francisco. 
I love it there. My heart's breaking for the Bay Area for you know what they're going through. And then of course I'm secretly doing the math and being like, wait, were we there for patient zero? Wait, <laughs> I mean it's terrible. Wait, where are we? I haven't looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're in the clear, but okay. it's a little scary. Um, and the UCB main stage show was just bananas, and we're looking to do some video content um, from those sketches and songs and ideas like we have stuff that we're trying to make for you since probably live performances won't be possible for a minute so we're just going to try to create some we're going to hang out with each other just pass it along <laughs> each of us yeah. the fetch ladies dawn what have you been doing how was your new year i'm gonna crash the fetch party <laughs> yeah. my new year has been great my new year has been great you um I, for my last um, visit everyone knows i work in, in uh, sports marketing and college athletics and today was a tough day for us like we talked about but um some of my teens have had the best season they've had in a long time so i'm excited about that i'm living out one of my dreams you talked about being a model like so who starts a modeling career at 45 years old uh, me <laughs> so i just found with the modeling agency part and parcel and i'm really excited that about great. that i'm so excited um to start working to start working with them and working on that i'm really excited i'm still working on my blog dlrb.com and um on the athletic um side i have an announcement my i went to the university of south Carolina, go Gamecocks, and they just notified me that they're going to retire my jersey. That is oh my God, so extraordinary. Uh, that traditionally doesn't happen for track and field athletes, but the athletic director there, Coach Tan, um, Ray Tanner, and the coach, Coach Fry, they just decided to do it across the board on all sports, and I'm really excited to be part of that, you know, that community. It's That's I'm really, ex I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I don't, uh, to not to toot my own horn, but I'm no, really proud of that yes, accomplishment. Yeah. I'll toot it for Thank you. Yes. 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 Really so that's amazing. kind of what I've been up to. That's and, you know, so great. And shopping way too much and bringing all the fashion <laughs> I can to my top. Listen, I thought of you. plus size ladies. <laughs> I thought of you because this is an anthropology. Oh. I got this with that anthropology sale. I know yeah. I saw you like marketing their stuff. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, oh, I'm going to wear put it. I yeah. hope someone from anthropology is listening. Thank you very I know, much. I know because <laughs> so they like invite you to their events. They should absolutely hire you to yes, do their stuff. I I mean, Kathy. come Kathy on now. Is, she knows what she's talking about, y'all. I just, <laughs> listen, I manifested Janice from Friends into my life, and that's like a whole other story. Well, I guess I'll tell it. So I teach voice lessons, and uh, one of the things I teach is to, like, put stuff in your mask to help it project. And I'm like, do you know Janice from Friends? And I'm like, ha, 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 And I'm like, that's where it is. Oh, Chandla. And I literally do this with every student. And I think in one week I'd done it, like, five or six times and some of the kids were older and got it because their parents let them watch Friends in the reruns and then some of the little kids were like I have no concept what you're talking about and I'm like laugh like a wicked witch instead you know whatever so I was at a friend's house they had a screening of something and I'm staring at this beautiful woman and I'm like I know this woman who is this woman and my friend turns to me he's like that's Janice from Friends and I literally went Oh my god I have to tell her so I <laughs> ran over and I was like I don't this might be inappropriate I'm so sorry I'm sorry, I just choked on my own spit. That was not Corona. Sorry. <laughs> it's this is the time of year when you have to explain every time you cough or sneeze. Yes, yeah. yes. Yes. So um so I was like, you know, I have to tell you, I was wondering who you were. My friend says you're Janice from Friends. I'm dying because I use you in my teaching. And she, I thought maybe she'd be like, oh, but she literally was like, oh my God, you are the second person this week who's a voice teacher who told me that. And then we all end up getting talking. She has a choir that she runs, like she does music. And like I got on that mailing list. I mean, she was so cool. Anyway, so basically now my joke is in warm ups, we're going to do $5,000 because <laughs> if I'm <laughs> manifesting, right? If I'm talking about Janice, You're so I just have to say, let's do 100. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> up the ante. I right. know. I like increments. I like increments. Mm. Fix my car. Yeah. So, um, but I had so I was out of town five out of six weeks of the new year, and it was like crazy. But all fun things. One of the things I got to do was go to Broadway Con, and I ran a body bias panel, basically like talking about the. You know, Broadway's body bias and the rise of the Hollywood aesthetic was the name of the panel. And, you know, it was Saturday, 10 a.m. I flew in on a red eye. I mean, like, who did I think I was? I mean, I was 
in the pictures, I look like a ghost person. <laughs> like, if you guys think I'm pale now, like, I am, like, the white of paper in those photos. I was like, oh, I'm posting these once, and that's it. Like, never again. Because in every one, I look a fright. But I will say, the panel itself was amazing. And it was 10 a.m. It was, like, a really busy time. Like, there were a lot of competitive things that people could have chosen mm -hmm. from. And when I walked in the door, I thought it was going to be an empty room. And I was, like, a little sick to my stomach. And then it ended up being, like, over 50 people at least, my friend Wonderful. counted. And so um, we had we had someone write up an article about it on, on CurtainCall.com. Uh, I think it's called – maybe it's called Curtain Call Broadway. Um, we, I've been reposting about it. If you guys want a little summation about what happened at the panel. Panel. It was a really great, robust discussion. I'm so grateful for all the panelists who came on. And um, so that was fun. And then I got to go back and sing at Jazz Lincoln Center with Our Lady J, who's been on the show a couple times. She's amazing. She wrote all this new music. We like were cramming in, like learning all the background vocals. And like she, her, she was like getting new tracks every day. And it was the most uh, unbelievable experience. She's so magical. I'm so glad she's taking that leap. Kyla, who was with me, you know, we were like partners in crime backing her up. And we looked fabulous, of course. We were very lucky that she took care of our outfits. <laughs> <laughs> they were very glittery. Um, yes, from ASOS. It was kind of amazing. Um, and just like, it was like bucket lists, you know. It was in the Appel Room. If you guys remember back in the day when it first opened, Ellen um, had done her show there mm. and it's like where it's like the big like I call it a screen it's not a screen it's a window but it's like a grid of like a grid window that shows Columbus Circle like from above in Time Warner Center it's unbelievable so um, yeah bucket list and the sound was the best sound I've ever had to deal with in a singing gig I mean they we had a guy just working on our monitor for who was a sound wow. designer yeah it was really cool so um, she's gonna be a big music star so I might have to go on tour sorry <laughs> Hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollars. I'm gonna sing that every morning. <laughs> it's a nice little warm up. It's a nice little mm -hmm. warm up. Um, we're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, um, we're gonna get off of our personal lives and we're gonna get onto all the hot, uh, celebrity hot topics and other such things. Uh, yes. At, from I don't want to hear your opinions on okay. them because I'm sure you have. Okay, we'll be back in plus this. After show, after show, hopefully uh, we have ten uh, people, ten uh, people ten giving people. five dollars on the Patreon. If ten people give five dollars a $5. month, we could do a whole season without giving money, getting money yeah. for people we don't trust. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Guys, I'm literally trying to pimp myself to dating apps to try to get us money. Ooh. I'm scared. Don't make me do that. Ooh. Just give us five dollars. Welcome hours. back, and um, I hope you enjoyed that little break. Is that the new one that I made? Oh, that was the new um, Patreon. I made a little tag for our Patreon. Um, you know, guys, if you can support, I wouldn't have to beg the universe for five thousand dollars. <laughs> if five thousand of you, no, if one thousand of you gave. Five dollars, or just five dollars. <laughs> Give me just five dollars. <laughs> <Dun, dun. laughs> Hilarious, so dumb. But Patreon's great, and we have a ton of after-the-show content that's just for you. Nobody else gets to see it. So, um, if you like fat content, and sometimes we make out on it. Just FYI, I'm if just... you were interested. Suggesting we could, this has all been a very long con to get you to make out with me, Kathy. <laughs> I looked at her like, "Oh, is that where we're going? Sorry, okay, yeah. we're going there." Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna will it into. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make out with Kathy. <laughs> I mean, newspapers and making out. <laughs> <laughs> newspapers and making out. Um, we're gonna get into that in the third segment, Gloria. <laughs> Your mojo. <laughs> Your mojo. Um, more personal things coming up. So uh, we always have to talk about Lizzo on here. I don't care what anybody says. She's a queen. She won Grammys. Uh, I, I thought her Grammy performances were amazing. Um, and then Jillian Michaels, that stupid lady from The Biggest Loser, felt like she had to say something. What's her problem? <sighs> She's so annoying. 
She's so annoying that we wrote a sketch about how annoying <laughs> she made it into a sketch. Um, but I don't know if you heard, but Jillian Michaels is the brown-haired woman from The Biggest Loser. You know who she is? I heard something. I don't know the details. I feel like I'm out of the loop. She, I apologize, everyone. That's all right. That's why we're here to talk about it. I want your opinion. So she went on morning shows, and it's not like it was just one. Like, this was sort of... This is sort of the thing she gave them that she wanted to talk about. Oh. And it wasn't like a, a thing that she happened to say once. It was like what she wanted to talk about. Gotcha. And it basically was like, you know, Lizzo's great. I love her music, but why are we celebrating her body? Wow. Like, I, I love her music. I don't love her body. And I think what she's doing is is not good. Like, she's she's on the way to diabetes and a heart attack is basically what she said. Just like when you lose 100 pounds in five weeks and you gain back 200. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, it's like, yeah. Well, it's just, I don't understand this idea of having to take somebody down. Like, if, look, not everyone has to like everyone. I get it. But if you don't like Lizzo or if you don't like that she's getting praise, if you don't like that she's a fat woman or that she's getting praise because she's a fat woman, then just shut your mouth. Like, why do you have to talk about it? Like, just live your life. You're not talking to Lizzo. You're not involved in her life. You're not representing her. So, like, why even yeah, bring it up? Yeah, she's not involved in your show at all. No. Like, there's nothing. She has one has nothing to do with the other. And honestly, my problem is, is that none of those journalists challenged her on the results of that study they did of The Biggest Loser, people that you just talked about. Right. You know, they studied a, a bunch of them about their metabolisms and to see where they were at. And their metabolisms were ruined right. by that show. Right. And by her training, by her quote unquote training. Right. And so the fact that no journalist stood up and was like, well, that's so interesting because how do you feel about this study that's been done? And they're saying that all those people who did your, like. No one's, but no one's asking that question. No, and no, no one's either bringing up that Lizzo does how many shows a week that she she's an athlete, like she sure. is really working out hard out there. And yeah, has that anybody shouldn't... ever tried to sing and dance at the same time? I mean, I have. You know, when you've been in the club <laughs> and you're just singing and dancing, mm -hmm. you just out of breath. She is like in good yeah. shape. So right. the fact that it's not the shape Jillian Michaels likes. Why don't we ask her that? Like, what's her problem? Because mm -hmm. she, she's one of those people who tries to take the angle of, like, oh, it's for her health. But I want to call her out and say it's not for her health because her health is fine. Yeah, or uh, her health is between her and her doctor. Yeah, true. Even more importantly, like, it's none of your business. And it, if she's yeah. going out and entertaining people and people are buying what she's selling, what does that have to do with you and your show? Why do you need validation from, like, the people who like Lizzo in order to do the thing that you're doing, which is basically torturing people torturing uh, you know you're torturing fat yeah. people every week yeah. I mean I don't know what's happening with that show I won't even touch it with a 10 foot pole I want it to get no viewers I want it to have no ratings and I hope that's the direction we're in and you know there's like another show too that's happening on TLC that's like like my five ton family or something like that that like follows a, a fat black family around and it's just kind of like it's like more of the same you know, guys, I, I, I maybe we should take this into this direction because it's been bugging me. But I, there just have been so many articles lately. And it's not like it's just on Medium people posting. It's like things like the New York Times covering, taking on articles from women in particular who are so miserable about their bodies and they're, they're quote unquote, they call them, they think of themselves as fat, although the fat community would be like, yeah, but you can still shop in a store. Um, and like, it's like this thing of like the sad sack syndrome. Like, why is mainstream media so into sad sack women? And why is that a narrative that feels like that's the answer to fat phobia for them is we're going to give a platform for these sad sack stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just want to get there. There was that woman. I want to say her name. Ugh, I'm going to mess it up. Maybe it was Sarah Miller. She like she wrote an article and then I went and happened upon a podcast that she was doing. And then it was live. It was like a live radio thing. And I could not believe how miserable she sounded. And I wanted to reach through the I like, wanted to call up and be like, could you just talk to me? 
I need you need to talk to people who aren't going, yeah. Like you need to like yeah. talk to people who can show you there's another way. Well it's just it's a cycle and it's like just kinda like the way that there's an emotional abuse cycle in like families, you know? Like you have to break out of that cycle out of your sometimes it's your social circle. And for people who do who are surrounded with people who are constantly reminding them that they're broken or that they're they need to get better, like how how do we f- encourage them how do we find them and pluck them out and say you're not broken you don't don't need to get fixed i think it all people people publicize and they like um they love that because it's all about this aspiration right so like if i write an article about oh i don't like my hair i don't like my skin tone oh my um i don't like my dress size misery loves company so i think what we have to do it start doing is starve in the misery my misery does not like company so if y'all hear me complaining about <laughs> anything that the mainstream society might not like about my body i want you to just cut it off like misery loves company so people want to say like we're going to sell this sad sack story because a hundred other women feel this way and everyone's going to chime in because they all aspire to be X, Y, and Z. And X, Y, Z really doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. If X, Y, Z existed, we wouldn't have need another diet. You'd have one diet, it'd work. You'd have one workout, it would work. And everyone would be happy. Fat and happy, skinny and happy, tall and happy, short and happy. Everyone would just be happy with themselves. So I think it's all about this aspiration that even at your saddest, darkest moment, someone's telling you like, oh, it's going to get better tomorrow or you can be better. Just try this. Try this magic pill instead of like, you know, do the things that do the work that will help you get better. It's like, try this. It's like we live in a microwave society. Even if you're a sad sack, it's a microwave sack. It is. I will tell you, her tone was so nihilistic, though, that it took me back because it didn't have... I mean, it did have that, I I don't like that I'm this size, I want to be thinner, and I will always have to be struggling in order to just maintain where I'm at. She sounded really hangry, quite honestly. But also, you know, Knowing about the My body, bones. <laughs> <laughs> you no. <want> a skull bone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just throw her one, right? Yes. Um, I the the um think she. It's like she's aware of the body positive movement. I mean, she said she was aware of it, but it was like it. She was like, it's not diet culture has me, and she just sort of made this decision that like she couldn't be affected by seeing something other than the norm. Mm. You know, seeing something that is in society other, but actually is most of us. It it was fascinating. I mean, there's been those studies where how much you, what you see really affects the way your brain chemistry works. And maybe she just hasn't been around enough of it. And that's why, you know, we have fats. That's why we try to make ourselves as visible as possible as women of size because we want people to see that there are a lot of us and we don't get seen. That's yeah. why representation does matter. Literally. Yeah. I mean, I I haven't been as active as I want to be. It's It's been hard ever since Facebook really took over Instagram for me to sort of like jump in. My numbers have plummeted on Plus the Show. Like, to be honest, it already was hard for fat women to get any kind of cycling and then if you put the fat hashtags on your engagement came down and I I've gone from like my stories getting like 200 300 hits to getting like 20 it's been bad so I and I get into resistance because I'm like why am I putting all this effort in but I do repost a bunch of different looking women and some uh, non-binary and men too just because I know people don't know where to start and mm-hmm. if and if anything, they can start at least at plus the show, mm-hmm. and and so you can get those that those images in your eyeballs because they're not readily available. Except for they are readily available in some advertising spaces. I guess right now, according to commercial agents, like big girls are in. They want to see the big well, girls. But what they mean when they say that <laughs> is that they want a big girl maybe for one of their clients. They don't mean we're now going to start casting indiscriminately. It still means okay, we'll let one of you guys what's big, in. It's all relative to what's big. A big is a size 10 compared to a size 2. Right. They need to get mm-hmm. a size I 20 mean, up in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like LA, LA plus size is a 6. Right. I yeah. mean, that's the truth of the light. Yeah. I mean, I, but I, I have seen some ads 
um, watching TV lately that have had more than one plus size woman and not mm-hmm. and not advertising plus size clothes. I agree. I've seen a couple too. I have not seen that be the norm. Like no. I have, that's not turned into what I see when I s- turn on TV. Yeah, well, we're going to be watching a lot more TV lately, apparently, because <laughs> we're going to be trapped in our houses. So you get to watch all the Plus This shows, guys. Um, another hot topic I want to talk about is um, uh, Massachusetts State Rep Tram uh, Nigan. No, n- n- I should have looked up how to pronounce it before. Um, they're by Team Tram, so on Twitter, so... You can find out who it is. Is it Negan? I don't know. N G U Y E N. I'm terrible. Filed a bill that was um, to work on addressing weight and height discrimination. Really? And I'm very excited about it. That wow. means if it exists in one space, that means it could exist in others. That means enough people were lobbying for that, for that to happen, which is just like really, really cool. And That's good news. Yeah, it's really, really good news. And and it makes me kind of want to, like, dig in. And, like, you can read it if you want. I posted it on our page. It is on our Instagram, too. And, you know, you can read, like, what the law actually says. And it, it's exciting. And it, to, like, pitch that to our state representatives I think would be really cool. By the way, Katie Porter today, did you see her? If yeah. she was going around, I mean, I'm assuming everyone's on Twitter as much as me because <laughs> life sucks. But um, but Katie Porter like ripped everyone in New Hampshire <laughs> and basically like had a whiteboard and was like, how much it, does it cost to get tested? How much does the flu thing cost? How much does this cost? I know it's this much. And she's like, OK, one thousand three hundred thirty one dollars. Are you going to make Americans pay that per person just to get tested or is that going to be taken care of? And the guy's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. She's like, no, reclaiming my time. You need to tell me because I said we looked up the law and sent you a letter last week that you have the authority. I mean, it was Katie Porter, please come on the show. <laughs> I just, she like surfs. She's like the coolest. Katie Porter. Yes. Manifest her Katie, on the show. Katie Porter. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. But isn't that exciting, guys? I'm going to be, I'm going to lobby and make you do it yes. too. <laughs> did you guys vote? Yes. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Did, you, did you have trouble down balloting? Down ballot? Wait, Meaning wait. like with all those names and the oh. things and the props? Um, well, so I did it by mail. So I had a little bit of time to, well, also when they sent the vote by mail ballots, uh, like half the people running for president weren't running for president anymore. Right. Uh, half. <laughs> so, it was like none. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to go back and like, okay, not this one, not this one. Um, not that they were even people I was going to vote for, but... Um, but I had a little bit of time to sit at home and like look stuff up, so it wasn't too too bad. Yeah. Yeah. The cool. good thing about working on a college campus is you hear about like all the things that are going on <laughs> in society. All our students are just like, Miss Dawn, I've got a question for you. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And I'm like, I'm going to start closing my office door. But it was great because they actually had a polling station on campus, so it was like lunch break, boom, pop right over and get it done. It was so great for them to do that, and there was so many students. I was so happy to see the line wrapped around the building of students. These kids, 18 to 25, well, see, something on a traditional campus, so maybe 18 to 105, but they were out there voting in numbers. It was great to see. It was That's really fantastic. great to see. They're finding that the numbers are off the hook. Mm-hmm. Which it was is so really, great really to see. Good. I'm really proud of our students. Yeah, and also California has like the easiest laws like to vote. It may, may have taken a long time because of computer stuff. I will say, being a permanent mail in voter and then holding it to the last day and dropping it off at the library is the easiest way and that's the hack way that I do like I, I've waited in the lines before and it's like fine but I'd much rather just be like bawling and be like bye library sticker run out you know <laughs> the only ma- you get your mail in sticker now yeah. too it's like uh, I voted by awesome. mail yeah awesome. I loved it I loved it yeah I definitely voted I'm a, I'm a hope I'm hoping that everyone gets well enough and that we can actually no- vote in November hopefully we'll be able to <laughs> <laughs> make that happen um one more thing we i mean we we could spend like literally one minute on this adela skinny <laughs> and a lot of people are having feelings mm. about it i'm one of those people that is surprised by it i'm surprised by my feelings i i don't really know enough about adele to know yeah. any about anything about what happened in her life. Um, I don't care that she gains or loses weight. Um, I care more about the reactions that I see to it because the magazine covers or the stories are all highlighting like 
her new body, her new hot body, her like I don't she's not the one out there saying, "Oh, look at me, I'm hot now." So I'm not mad at her. No. But I am mad at the way we're deciding that now she's attractive. Yeah. Cuz fuck you. I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm supposed to. Say you that. totally can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Say all the swears. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I, I'm i surprised. You know, I definitely follow Adele. Like, I'm a little crazy. Um, <laughs> but, you know, when her big first, like, was a 21, really hit here, I got to go to an Artist Den show that was only, like, 200 people in, like, a tiny venue. I was in second row and just, like, eating it up with a spoon. I, so I've, like, like, I had my friends from London send me it. Like, I'm a little crazy. Um and you know, it's not like you see her at night. Her nineteen album, like she was a she was a bigger girl and has sort of like gradually been losing weight anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know when you go through a divorce, the um, like that obviously can change right. stuff you very much. And it can, and she's a mother, and that also can do stuff. Mm-hmm. I, um, it just I feel like it's just so hard for someone who looks like her, who looks like us, to break through in the music industry. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that, I don't think that people really understand the touchstone she is and the touchstone Lizzo is. And you know what I mean? Like you don't, when you have a big body, you don't get past those dudes in the music industry. You just don't. They're fucking misogynistic fucks. I know, I was sat in front of, a, when I was 23, I sat in front of a music guy at an audition and he was like, you're just going to need like $10,000 to like record a song, like a, a song that's like a hit that, you know, from like someone who's doing it right now. He's like, that's raisable money. He's like, you're going to have to lose like 20 or 30 pounds though. And of course in my head I was like, oh, you mean 40 or 50 pounds. And I was kind of like, is my life going to be about losing weight? And I just didn't want my art to be mm. dependent on that weight. I'd seen people like Trisha Yearwood and like people who had been kind of like tortured into trying to be thin and and I wasn't Sometimes interested. It's just not for you. I, uh, it's just not. You can try as hard as you can. Yeah. You can eat all the green leaf lettuce, yeah. all the brown rice, all the grilled fish, and your body sometimes just is what it is. Yeah. And it just likes what it likes. And you know what my mm-hmm. mama says? If you don't like it, don't look. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so maybe we should do yeah, it. true. But isn't exactly. it weird? Just listen. It's music, don't just look. listen. Like, what is people's yeah. problems? You I mean, like, the really fact hard. that Jillian Michaels even feels entitled enough to say that, right, about a musician. Like, it is like a thing. And and for the men who control the industry, it really is. So I do have feelings about uh, the Adele thing. I think also Adele always, to me, was the thing I always wanted to be but didn't know that I wanted to be. Like, people would always ask me what kind of music I wanted to sing. And I would be like, I want to be like Jewel, but like soulful. And like, so then all of a sudden Adele came and I was like, like that. I wanted to be like that. But um, so I think I have like my own hang ups about it. That makes me sad Mm -hmm. that we did lose her in a way. But. You know, hopefully there'll be but room for somebody didn't else. Didn't you say that we might have won in Alanis? So I'm really excited <laughs> about that because Alanis Morissette we is like did. a she is like a badass bitch. She I love is. Alanis Morissette and she's and curvy I've, right I've now. I loved all her stuff. Yes, and, and I would I would love to get a fat Alanis. <laughs> <laughs> Alanis Morissette. No, don't. I do. I know don't. she's an ironic. Listen, I know my music. <laughs> don't you think? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we have to sneak another break in. I want to talk about the work that you guys and I did over the last few months um, with our audience, if you don't mind sharing just a okay. little bit. We'll be back at Plus Six. Promotional consideration provided by Scrubs Body, an all female owned business giving you permission to pamper in jars and bottles. Now with a brick and mortar location at 245 Main Street in Farmingdale, New York. Still available online at scrubsbody.com. Hi, guys. It's Kathy from Plus This. I'm getting ready for season five. Can you believe it's been five seasons already? We start back March 12th at 6 p.m. at UBN Go. Per use, this season, I'm not just going to have one host. I'm going to have all the hosts. It's going to be Kathy and Friends. And more importantly, it's going to be Kathy and Friends and you. Because we're dedicating one whole segment to have a conversation with one of our viewers about how fatness 
is perceived in the world for them and like what challenges they have. So I want to talk about it. I want to help you if I can. I want to take the things I've learned from amazing guests over four seasons and start to help you out. So email me at plus the show at gmail.com or DM me in my Instagram at plus the show and you could be on plus the show. I'll see you March 12th. We're back, we're back. Of course, we had like the most amazing conversation. Guys, I'm sorry that I'm not looking on Facebook like I promised. I knew we just had, I was making too much eye contact. Let me see what all of you are saying. <laughs> um, oh, it's going to my, it's, I want to go to plus this. Show me where plus this is. I want to see. You what think people are just talking to you on your personal one? They might. Sometimes <laughs> that happens Fancy. too. I mean, I, but I haven't even been on Facebook at all. I just, like, don't even want to deal. I'm like, oh, yeah. Hi, Dawn, Deanna says. Valerie Green. Hey, Valeria. girls. Oh, Wendy. It's pronounced Win. Uh, she tried to help me. Wendy, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> and hi, Megan. Uh, oh, uh, you don't have to go to the library anymore with voting. Any location is a drop-off place. Now, thank you for these in, for this info. That's really great. So um, one of the things that uh, I the promo just talked about was I have been sort of organizing all of the incredible, incredible things that I've learned and people that I've learned from doing this show now four seasons and now this is our fifth that's crazy to me um and sort of organizing them into topics and kind of presenting that in workshop form for people to kind of do like a course about what is we were just having this conversation what is body positivity what is fat acceptance what is loving yourself <laughs> i mean like all these things feel like they're catchphrases but what does it actually mean and like how do you get off of your own personal merry-go-round about your body and dieting enough to hop off and go, wow, the world needs to be changed, and how can I help be a part of the change that happens systemically uh, to give fat people more rights and more room, more freedom? And these two lovely ladies went through a couple of my course days and um thank you for being willing to talk about it you know when I left you last we had sort of progressed into so I the first three chapters are um body present uh body past and body future we didn't quite get to body future the way I have like newly designed it so hopefully I'll grab you and have you back on to talk about that um but we we talked a lot about body present and about like the things you feel about your body today. And after doing that work, like how do you feel about what has happened over the last couple of months for you? Have you felt there's been progress made ever like since we kind of delved into your own things that you believe about your body? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I always try to be introspective and figure myself out, but I it was very helpful to have someone guide that process because there were things that I wasn't even aware that I didn't mm -hmm. know. So like some of the things I discovered now that I'm aware of them, ha it, my life has been much nicer since I can acknowledge those things and then I correct them. So it's nice to have someone guide you through that. Did you feel like um, you had you actually got tools at the end mm -hmm. of the day that you do use? I did, I felt that at every every of the workshops there was always something to take home with me. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been trying to do, you know, body positivity and body positive thoughts for a while. And still there's, every time we did a workshop, it was like there's a new layer that I f didn't know was there. And I now have this new way of dealing with this thing I didn't know was holding me back in so many ways. I think what I learned the most from it is like your presence is, um, is kind of helpful to other people. Right, so like if you're a bigger woman or a taller woman, I learned that like um, someone will tell me I'm intimidating. Don't you're intimidating? Well, no, I'm not intimidating. You're just intimidated because you act how you act because of you, not because of me. So I think that I've learned that, and that's really helped me be more positive about how I look, how I walk, how I talk, how I stand, all of that because my presence it just is what it is. I can't control it. It's out of my all of this is out of my control, <laughs> girl. I can't control it. But I mean, I don't have to um, shrink it either, and I think that's what 
Cliff was a big part of like out, after I finished competing, I spent a lot of time shrinking like all that um, assertiveness and that aggression and competitive style that I had as an athlete. I spent some time shrinking that because that might not be appropriate. That might offend someone. That might intimidate someone. Like I went to a staff meeting of all the managers on our campus, and this man walks up to me and I shake his hand. I'm like, hi, I'm Don. It's nice to meet you. He's like, you're an Amazon. That's what he said to me. I was like, I hope you don't work with other women on campus because you're ridiculous. <laughs> That's what he said to me. So after that, every meeting, I was ready for him. I mean, I was ready. <laughs> and it's, it's, it just happens that I just couldn't get to any more of the meetings, which is good because I probably would have said something that wasn't <laughs> very nice to him, right? But who? why does he think it's okay to comment on how I look? I didn't yeah. walk up to him and be like, man, you're so small. Yeah. Like, I didn't, I would never walk up to a man and say that. Yeah. So I think it's just my confidence is building from those exercises and just being exactly who I am, looking exactly how I look, and just accepting it and loving it. Yeah. Do you feel like going back and looking at your past and like the way your body was sort of exposed to the world? Because at very young ages, as women, we get told about our bodies when we're kids, oh, very, young. very young. And did you feel like that? I, I know a lot of it also, by the way, is painful. Like a lot of it is really difficult. And mm. um, I can't pr like express my gratitude to both of you enough for like sharing those moments with me because they also heal me and the things that happen to me as you're talking about it, right? Because there is something about I'm not alone in this. And I think in those moments when you're a kid, you feel alone. You feel like no one else is being told this every day. No one else is being called fat every single day of their life. No one else is being told that they shouldn't be eating something or shouldn't do something. It, it feels very isolating. So uh, I was just wondering, did, did any of that sort of make your choices as an adult, like actually – seeing that from a different perspective going, wait a minute, I'm outside of that now and I'm looking at that and that's so wrong that that happened to me. Mm. Sure, I mean, I think for me, uh, because I grew up very Catholic, um, there was a lot of pressure put on being uh, not sexy, like, you know, hiding your body because you're supposed to be pure and innocent and there's nothing pure or innocent about me. <laughs> I've so, seen your closet. I know that's true. <laughs> so, you know, growing up, you know, I was always taught that I had to be, I had to hide myself. And in a way, I think it was, it's easy sometimes, like as a fat person to hide yourself. Mm -hmm. You feel like you can get away with things because no one's looking because you're fat, you know? So I did use fatness, not intentionally, but I think subconsciously being fat kept me protected from my real nature. I mean, <laughs> there were many times in my life as like a teenager, like in high school, where I thought, man, if I'm God must be making me fat because he knows what a whore I am. <laughs> like, he knows if I was skinny, I would come to school in like halters and like teeny teeny skirts um we had a very sim <laughs> that's a very similar thing for me i actually even think i confessed that to a priest once that i was like i hate that not that i hate i want to wear like skimpy <laughs> outfits to the church. club <laughs> totally i wanted to wear skimpy things to the club and and if mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fat so i won't and and the priest was like well you if you were thin you wouldn't wear the and i was like yeah i would yeah. like I I, just 14 yeah i would yeah. like that's all i wanted anyway <laughs> thank you for but that. I, yeah. I mean i think now as an adult when i get to do what I want and that I now that I feel way more confident in my body um I do wear things that I feel sexy in and yeah I'm still not walking out in a bikini because I don't feel like it but I could if I wanted to I guess which yeah. is new yeah I think since I was a little girl my my body I don't know if it was necessarily me being fat or slim or but just my sheer size and I don't think I'm that tall because I work where I work. Everyone's my height. Right, right. right. But I remember being like five or six years old and my mom's friend in the grocery store had to comment on how big I was. My teacher one time told my mom, Dawn's too big to be acting like this. And God bless my mom, pulled her all the way, to, got her all the way together and said, Dawn is 10 years old. Her mental capacity is that of a 10-year-old. So you treat her like the other 10-year-olds in this classroom. Wow. And I've never seen my mom be on my side. It was always the teacher was mm -hmm. right. So ever since, is this my sheer size has been someone's, um, the comment of some, someone's comment. Like, you're, you're pretty for a big girl. If I hear that one more time. Yeah. One more yeah, time. Yeah, and to figure out the way to be like, you want to know what? Like, 
that that's interesting you would say that, but actually it's not an appropriate thing to say. And like mm. to learn to have the assertive, assertiveness socially Just to like stop off that. On the Amazon exactly. Account, <laughs> exactly. Guys, I can't believe it's been, we have to go. It's so bananas. <laughs> can you please tell people where to find you? Yes. Um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm Gloria the Actress. And you can find my podcast on Spotify. It's called Noveleando Podcast. Yes. Yeah, Spanish people know how to spell that. Okay. Yeah, and that's right. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> no, yeah, that. There we, there we go. Boom. My name is uh, Dawn Ellerby. You can find me at D E E underscore Ellerby on Instagram and D Ellerby.com is my website. Yes. And hire these ladies, please. I, as always, am Kathy Deach. Honored to be here with you <laughs> next week. If you think you would like to be on the show and actually work through some of the th- workshop things that we've done with these ladies, um, email me at plus the show at gmail.com and maybe you could be on. You can Skype with me. You could be in studio if you're in LA. I would love to have you. All right. Thanks. We'll see you next week. Plus this. <laughs> Plus this.